Selway for 343 Labs. And today I have a plug-in here from Arturia, Mini V. It's a version, it's based on the, the Mini Moog, the classic subtractive synth. I use this synth in class here as a way of introducing subtractive synthesis. It's great for that. You know, the, the Mini Moog is a, a very distinctive synth that has a great character and Arturia does a good job of capturing that. And also, you know, the way that it works uh, and the basics of subtractive synthesis are mostly all here. And it's a great place to start when you're going over these, uh, the elements of subtractive synthesis. And so it's got all the, you know, the main controls of the uh, Mini Moog, but also when you, we're ready to move on and look at some slightly more complex ideas with different types of modulation, we can open up this hidden view here, and we have a modulation matrix, which gives us some extra possibilities that the original Mini Moog didn't have. Also, you know, it's not just a monophonic synth. It doesn't just play one note at a time. It's got a polyphonic mode. We can have up to 32 voices of polyphony. We can also use those voices for unison, and uh, stack the voices up and detune them and make things sound really fat, which is very useful. So it's got all of that. So we can expand on the sound of the original Mini Moog. And then we also have, well, there's an LFO and an arpeggiator in here. And we have some built-in effects. There are vocal filter, which uh, it's formants, uh, which give the tone of different vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U, and so on. And then uh, maybe a little more usefully, I have to say, uh, a, a, a chorus with three different modes. It sounds really nice and a delay. As I mentioned, I use this in class and the synthesis course that we teach here is as much about production and making music as it is about learning about synthesis. So, you know, we try to do a lot of making sounds in context. Basically what I've got here. So I've used the, the Mini V to create several different sounds. Uh, I have two different kick drums. One's a shorter punchy one, one's a longer boom, kind of an 808 style kick, a snare, a hi-hat, which has got a sort of a strange little modulation in it, uh, a lead sound, uh, a, a kind of a strange pad, um, and didn't get to the bass yet. So let's have a listen to what I've got so far. kind of the vintage electro groove there. And um, let's take a look quickly at each of the sounds I have built up. So here's the kick, and listen to that by itself. And you can see I have a little bit of processing here. You know, I, I always, when I'm working, I think about mixing as I go. So I've always got an EQ and a compressor and other things from the beginning when I'm making these sounds. And uh, anyway, what's happening here is one oscillator. We have oscillator three with a triangle wave. And there's a, a little bit of filtering going on here and a little bit of noise mixed in to give it that kind of bright, slightly brighter transient. Um, what really gives this the, the punch to this kick is the pitch modulation. And on the front of this thing, there is no envelope modulation for the pitch for the frequency of the oscillators. Over to the, the modulation matrix in here, we can assign one of the envelopes. There's an envelope for the filter and the loudness contour. That's an envelope for the amplitude. And I've assigned the filter envelope to control the frequency of oscillator three. So I'm going to turn off some stuff. Let's turn off the noise and listen to what this sounds like. Just so it still sounds kick like, right? Increase the decay time a little bit, a little more oomph to give it more uh, sort of power. I'm going to increase the pitch modulation. And it's subtle, but it just gives 
a little bit more uh, punch. The next sound is also a kick drum. Kind of the same idea, except we've got a longer decay time, so it's kind of where it's, it's booming, right? It's not punching, it's not as short. And um, let's keep going through these other sounds. And um, the next one is another kick, pretty similar. Uh, except this one has got a longer decay and not so much of the noise in there. It's a little rounder. And uh, in a I've got the soft clipping on, which kind of it kind of limits the sound and adds some harmonics, but I wanted a little bit more than that. So uh, I've also got Live's Saturator to give it some, some more overtones and also uh, the glue compressor to kind of tighten it up again. And um, it's getting with those effects, I'm getting the weight that I want for a sound like this. And uh, moving along, the snare is, you know, a lot of times the subtractive synthesis, you know, there's some kind of basic techniques to get started with percussion, and it has a lot to do with pitch mod. You know, like I went through with the with the first kick sort of showing how I was using this uh, envelope to modulate the pitch of the oscillator. Um, it's the same thing with a lot of other percussion sounds. It, it, and, you know, in the case of a snare, it's, it's got uh, a similar kind of thing going on, except, of course, it's a higher frequency. It doesn't have the low end uh, of, of the kick. So let's take a look at the matrix again here. So, yeah, I've got the same VCF envelope routed uh, to the frequency of oscillator three. I've got the noise mixed in. Let's get this going so we can hear it. Right, so there's a couple of layers to this sound, right? We've got, well, I say punch, but it's just like the kick. It's, it, it, that really fast decay time sweeping the pitch down is giving more body to that. Uh, it just sounds flat without it. It has a short decay time on the lo loudness contour. We've got the noise generator on. It's quite loud, right? And that's what's giving us the snare character. It's, mix it's the mixing where if you think about it, like the way a snare drum is set up, you know, you've got the round drum and you've got the the drum head stretched across it, and that's giving you the tone of the sound. And then there's the rattle, the rattle on the bottom, the uh, the metal wires stretched across the bottom that are making the noise. So that's kind of what you're emulating here with these uh, the noise layer and the oscillator. And we've also got one of the internal effects on here. We've got the chorus, and it's just giving it a little bit of shimmer, a little stereo image on the highs, which sounds kind of nice, right? And now let's take a quick look at the hi hats. All right, so I'm gonna sort of go backwards here real quick. I'm turning that EQ off. Still sounds like a hi-hat, but it's not quite as bright and shiny as it was when I have that uh, the EQ cutting out all the lows and mids and sort of sculpting it a little bit in the highs. So what's happening with this guy? We have, again, there's a lot of noise. And there's some kind of funny modulation going on in here. I've got the LFO routed to Again, to, to the frequency of the oscillator. Let's get rid of that. And what's happening with this sound is, you know, I'm trying to generate something that's a little bit more metallic. So it's not just the noise. I've got a couple of oscillators going. And, uh, yeah, oscillator three is on as a modulator. We're not hearing the sound coming out of oscillator three, but it is modulating the frequency of oscillator one, and we're hearing some other kind of strange overtones in the sound. And it's giving, giving it a little bit of a metallic tone. So since we're working within the limitations of this synth, it only has, and it only has a, a low pass filter, but you know, a hi-hat, if you think about it, doesn't have a lot of low frequency in it. So um, I can't rely on a low pass filter to, to get the, the character that I want. And that is, that's what I'm doing here with the EQ8. I'm using, it as a high pass filter. I'm removing 
all the low frequencies, all, all the, the low noise that you wouldn't want to have in this type of a hi-hat sound. I mean, it still sounds hi-hat-like without it, but I want this kind of bright, shiny, uh, a little bit thin effect, and that's what I'm getting by cutting all of the lows out of the sound. So there's another little thing going on with the sound. It's subtle, but it, for me, it makes it all the more interesting. It makes it more expressive. And I've also got in the modulation matrix, the incoming velocity from the MIDI clip um, is controlling the envelope, uh, the VCA envelope. And when that velocity is higher, the decay gets a little longer. And when the velocity is lower, uh, the decay time gets a little bit shorter. And so, you know, if you look at the MIDI, you can see it's kind of creating an accent. It's not getting louder, but the sound's getting a little longer and fuller every time the velocity is higher. If I click on this and then reduce, you can hear, all right, there's some echo on there, but You can hear how it gets much shorter and thinner. It's almost as if I've got closed and open. You know, each note could be a closed or open or somewhere in between, depending on how the velocity is, is performed. And uh, on top of all that, we've got a little chorus on there and uh, some delay. The MIDI sync is on, so it's creating a rhythm. Right, and that's it for the drum sounds. All right, so that was a quick overview of a few percussion sounds made with the Mini V. I made these sounds, you know, kind of with an idea in mind of working within, when we work in class on making sounds, that's what we're doing uh, is uh, thinking about sounds that work with the music that we want to make. It's not just going through, you know, this is how you do a kick, this is how you do uh, a snare, but really making the sounds in the context of production. That's one of the things that, that I teach. So that's it for the drums. Uh, in the next part, I'll get into some melodic sounds, you know, some lead or probably a bass sound. Uh, and maybe uh, we'll also get into the polyphonic mode of the Mini V, uh, creating, you know, pads or some kind of chord oriented sound. So uh, I'm continuing with this journey, making sounds with the, the Mini V, uh, Arturia's take on the Mini Moog, and uh, making some uh, sub sounds using the subtractive synthesis method and thinking about making these sounds in the context of a certain style. And uh, we did drums in the first part, and now I'm getting into some melodic parts. I've got a lead sound here and a pad, and then also I'm gonna try to make a, a bass sound, something not too complicated, but you know, I'm gonna start from scratch and, and create a bass that works with the drum groove and the lead melody that I have going here. So let's take a listen to this lead, see what I've got. So I've got Live's Delay on here, which is adding some, some nice atmosphere and uh, rhythmic variation. Uh, but I've just turned that off so we can hear the synth by itself. And what's happening here? We've got all three oscillators going. Let's turn off three and two and just listen to one. Okay, the oscillator modulation is on. Let's turn that off. So whatever that was doing was pretty subtle. There's oscillator two. Oscillator one a, is a pulse wave or a square wave. Oscillator two is a sawtooth and they're detuned just slightly. Oscillator three is playing a supporting role. It's sort of, it's just a triangle wave. So it's kind of dark and in the background, I'm not really hearing much of it. But what it's kind of doing in the background is uh, it actually is doing audio rate modulation of the frequency of the other two oscillators and of the filter. So So 
So it's pretty subtle, but it's adding some kind of detail to the sound. It's like a little bit of uh, noise and a little bit of texture going on. So also we've got the glide on. It's, you can hear there's a little bit of a bend between each note. And uh, the voice detune is up a little bit, which kind of as it, it drifts and you hear notes sort of slightly out of tune and it gives it again a nice little bit of texture and atmosphere, especially when the delay is on. And you can hear how when I increase the, the mod wheel, the modulation amount, it kind of gets a little detuned and a little brighter and even a little dirtier and noisier. And that's something I can play with uh, in my arrangement. And also, of course, I can uh, modulate the cutoff frequency. And I've also got polyphonic mode on. And when I increase the decay time, we hear each of those notes ringing out and it gets a little bit more dreamy and a little bit more intense at the same time. And I like that. To, that's something I'm, I can play with, you know, in my arrangement. I can have this sound sort of modulating and changing over time by, uh, you know, either assigning MIDI controls and, you know, performing changes to these sounds in real time and then recording that as automation. Uh, also, I can, you know, use Live's automation envelope or whatever your DAW is. You can use the automation envelopes to control the parameters of these synths. And that's, uh, that's definitely something we talk about a lot in class is making sounds that aren't just static, that can change over time and become more expressive. Right, so that's the lead. Let's take a quick look at my, well, I called it my weird pad. I wasn't quite sure what to call it. Let's see what's going on there. And I didn't record MIDI for this. Yet, you can hear it's, it's, it sounds like when I play one note, you're hearing the pitch go up and down. So that's just an oscillator three working as an LFO. It's set to a square wave and it's modulating the pitch up and down. And you're hearing these two different notes coming out of oscillator one. If I take away that modulation, right? Now it doesn't have the, the pitch going up and down anymore and it just sounds straight and I can introduce that. That's pretty piercing. It gets pretty intense sometimes, that sound. So you might have noticed when I was playing that, that the sort of the wobbling, the jumping up and down of the pitch was increasing and decreasing. So what's happening here is I've got the LFO, which is hidden here. So you might have noticed when I was playing that sound uh, that the rate, the speed of the, the pitch modulation, those, those pitches going up and down, was increasing and decreasing. And uh, what's happening is uh, second order modulation. I've got a modulator changing another modulator. Oscillator three is acting as an LFO. It's sending this uh, square wave to modulate the frequency of oscillator one, and that's causing the pitch to jump up and down. You know, if I increase the frequency of oscillator three, it'll jump up and down faster. And if I decrease, the frequency of oscillator three, it will get slower. So what I've got is the, again, the filter envelope routed in the matrix, right? The VCF envelope is modulating the frequency of oscillator three. And the, uh, you know, there's a slow attack time. So it will, as I hold a note down, you'll hear the rate you know, the frequency of oscillator three speed up and then it'll go, the decay is pretty short. So it'll, it, it kind of goes up and then goes back down quickly. When I let go. So that's what's creating that sort of speeding up and slowing down effect. The filter emphasis is very high and it's kind of creating another waveform on top of the sound. It's, it's, it's a, it's a ringing and uh, we're hearing a sine wave created uh, so it's sort of 
sounds like two tones playing together. And it's sort of, it, you know, I say ringing, it, it, even though it's sort of a soft uh, attack to that sound, it's sort of swelling up, it does have sort of a bell-like character. We've got, you know, this high-pitched triangle wave, which, and we also have this kind of ringing effect from the, uh, the sine wave created by the resonating filter, you know, and we're getting this kind of ringing-like pulsating spacey effect to this sound. And it's, it's a bit like a sound effect, or, but it's also kind of, it could be a musical sound, just depending on how you play it and how you use it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna listen to what I have again. I'm just gonna put the drums on, put the lead on, maybe play the pad a little bit, and I'm gonna start thinking about what kind of bass sound. I mean, I'm thinking bass is what I wanna add. I've already got a track here named bass, but uh, you know, we'll see where we end up. But I'm thinking low frequency, something that, you know, sort of, contrasts what I have with the other melodic parts and fits the groove of the drums. So let's see what we've got. So I had a quick listen and um, played the pad a little bit, tweaked it a little bit. Feel, feel like that one still needs a little work to be honest, but it is in the ballpark and it's giving me ideas and that's what's important here. Let's try and build up a bass sound to go with this now. Generally, you know, Arturia gives us these nice starting points the, in the presets. There are some templates, just, you know, basic setups for different types of sounds. And I usually just start with the one oscillator. The only thing coming out of this thing is, you know, the filter's not doing anything, you know, the cutoff's all the way up. There's only one oscillator on, it's set to a sawtooth wave, and it's just a good starting point for anything. I'm playing a bass sound, so I wanna make sure I'm got my keyboard down in an appropriate octave. All right, somewhere down there. It's pretty bright, right? Let's bring that cutoff frequency down. Now we're sounding more bassy. And, you know, a lot of times I'll have the musical idea and start with that, even if I don't have the sound right yet, I'll just get the notes in, get something sort of approximately where I want it to be, and then go in and start sculpting the sound around the musical idea. Sometimes it works the other way. Sometimes I have an idea for a sound and or I'm playing around with the synth and I just happen upon something that inspires me to have a musical idea and to get a track started. So it can go either way. Today though, I've got the, the idea already, sort of the rhythm that I want and the style that I want. So I'm gonna lay that down first. I've got this, you know, just a filtered sawtooth wave. I haven't done anything tricky yet with the synth. So, uh, and I'll just get, the rhythm right and notes right, and I might end up changing it later, but it's gonna help me sculpt my sound stylistically having the musical idea first. So that's kind of in the ballpark of what I wanted stylistically. Let's quantize that. All right, turn the hi-hats off, turn the 808 kind of boom off, stripped it down a little bit, makes it easier to hear what the bass is doing. I'm gonna even let to turn down the snare and the kick a little bit so we can you know, bring that bass up in the mix and hear a little bit more clearly what's going on. So let's get this shaped up. That's already usable, it's simple. Let's hear how that sounds with the kick and the snare so far. All right, that could work, but let's spice it up a little bit. Uh, bring in, let's see, I'm gonna mix that. There's, it's already, it's oscillator two is already set to a square wave. So let's hear how that sounds. already fatter. Um, and let's try and do this. I'm gonna use oscillator three. Let's turn oscillator three control. That's turning the key tracking for oscillator three on. Uh, when it's off, it stays at the same frequency no matter what note you're playing. It doesn't track up and down. And that's useful when you're using it as an LFO. Uh, but I've, I'm gonna turn the tracking on so 
bring the, the volume up. All right, so what's going on there? Again, I'm doing frequency modulation, oscillator three. Uh, it's hard to hear it. In fact, let's solo it again, and I'm probably gonna have to open the filter up so we can hear what the high frequencies are doing. Oscillator three is doing frequency modulation of one and two, and it's creating some subtle changes to the sound. It starts to get more sort of growly and strange when I push the amount of modulation up. Let's open up the, the cutoff frequency and see if we can hear that a little bit more clearly. Yeah, it's there. It's doing this kind of edgy sort of modulating thing in the high frequencies, which is kind of cool. And even, you know, when we bring the cutoff frequency down, it's hidden, but it's still under there. It's still kind of moving a little bit and adding that subtlety. Maybe if we detune a little bit more, we'll hear it. I have an idea. Let's get the filter FM going on and see what that can do for us. There it is. Now it's growling, now it's dirty. Yeah, I think we're getting there with that sound. It's sounding pretty cool. Let's see how it does with a chorus. Sounds pretty good. You can hear it phasing a little bit, but it doesn't get too thin. I think uh, their chorus algorithm's doing a good job. It's not... Uh, canceling out too much. I'm gonna listen to this one more time with the lead and maybe play with the pad and see how that's working. And you kind of saw how I built that bass sound up just from scratch in the context of this sketch that I have. And that's really what this is. I'm kind of sketching out a track, sketching out parts that will eventually turn into arrangement. And I'm doing the synthesis sort of in context of that. I'm not, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, you didn't see the process from the very beginning with the other sounds, but you know, you saw how I went from just that init patch, just that template to a more detailed, fuller bass sound. And I did that again, you know, at designing the sound and, with this sort of musical idea in mind. Also, you know, I was able to hopefully show you guys a little bit about how flexible just this, you know, one synth is. Uh, you know, we can, the bass is definitely more kind of a classic example of what, you know, what people know of like a mini Moog to be good for. This kind of big, rich, fat bass sounds, but, uh, you know, I could definitely go in many other directions with it, you know, from the percussion, the kind of detailed percussion to the kind of the, the more spacey pad sound effect, whatever it is, to the lead sound. Having those extra modulation possibilities and the built-in effects really give it, you know, just the overall sound quality of the thing are, is really good. So it's a, I feel like it's a, you know, kind of some good examples of what you can do with it. And also for me as a teacher, I like to show you know, musical ideas and synthesis ideas uh, within limitations. And, you know, sometimes that can be a good process if, uh, to take like one plugin and get to know it really well and try to work out as many different kinds of sounds as you can. Uh, and yeah, I think, yeah, this Mini V is pretty good for that. So hope you enjoyed the process and uh, the demonstration and uh, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.